today was a really exciting day for us, um, at, together with Google Cloud. Um, so Google, this morning at the keynote, uh, announced uh, the availability of Anthos. Anthos is a brand new hybrid cloud platform, hybrid Kubernetes platform, and we think that Anthos is going to be a game changer for the industry. What I'm going to cover for you over the next 50 minutes or so, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, you know, what is Cisco's partnership with, uh, with Google Cloud. We've been working for over two years on developing on, on Kubernetes, on Istio, a bunch of open source technologies. And I'll talk about what we've done together to enable hybrid cloud uh, for our customers. And, uh, and also I'll talk uh, in, in more detail about Anthos and uh, Anthos and how that integrates with Cisco's product portfolio, particularly on the data center, the networking, the security. So I'll go into a little bit of details about Cisco's reference architecture for, uh, for Anthos. Uh, I'm actually going to uh, actually spend some time doing a demo as well. Um, so if you haven't, if, uh, I don't know how many of you have attended uh, previous Anthos sessions before. I don't know if you've actually seen a demo. Uh, I'm actually going to do uh, a little bit of a demo and show you, uh, you know, it, show it live in action. Um, I've also got a customer case study, a customer reference that I'll, uh, I'll talk about just briefly. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, have, you know, pause for que uh, questions at the end if we have time. It's a, I've got a lot of content to cover in 50 minutes. Uh, if I'm able to get through it in time, then I will uh, you know, take questions at the end. Otherwise, I'm available. Uh, you know, many members of our team is available here. Uh, happy to stay back and answer questions uh, if you need to. All right, so without, uh, you know, without any delay, let's get uh, to the details. Um, so firstly, you know, uh, the public cloud adoption is a given, right? Uh, everyone, you know, 70 plus percent uh, of customers use public clouds today. It's a big mandate uh, across the industry. Everyone's adopting uh, the public cloud, but everything is not moved. Only 10% of the workloads in the world have actually moved to the public cloud, so which means that still 90% of workloads are running on the premise. Not just that, um, many of the workloads are actually moved uh, have actually come back. So about 80% of workloads that, that migrated for various reasons uh, actually came back because they probably migrated too early. What, is, what does that mean, right? The, the, to what that means is that on-premise clouds and hybrid clouds are going to be a reality. And the entire industry is realizing that hybrid cloud is a reality and we all need to be able to develop for, 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 the, for the new future, which is, which is based on hybrid. What customers are doing is they'll run workloads in the cloud when they need to, They'll run workloads on premise when they need to. And what we as an industry are trying to do is make it easy for customers to make that choice. They can migrate when they want to. They can stay on prem when they want to. But we want to be able to enable that choice and let customers migrate at their own pace. Or if they choose not to migrate and they're for security reasons or compliance reasons, they need to keep things on premise. Uh, you know, we will, you know, we'll help them and keep things on premise as well. So this is the vision that we got together, together with Google uh, and with Google Cloud. And we've been working on this for over two years on a variety of uh, technologies, and starting with Kubernetes and hybrid Kubernetes uh, with Istio, which is a service mesh technology, again, uh, driven strongly by Google, but where Cisco is a big contributor. And so we've been working together on some of these hybrid technologies for, for, for two years. But what we are really excited to announce today and really excited to share today is our partnership extending to Anthos. If the name Anthos is new to you, uh, it was previously known as a cloud services platform, and I'll describe what the cloud services platform is, but this is a brand new hybrid cloud solution announced by Google Cloud today, and this is the focus of my, uh, of my session, right? What Cisco is doing specifically with, uh, with Anthos. So as a very quick introduction, what is Anthos? Um, I don't know how many of you attended the keynote in the morning and, and saw the introduction. But think of what Anthos is trying to do, is provide a ubiquitous environment across Google Cloud, your on-premise environment, and other public clouds. A ubiquitous development environment that's consistent, that's secure, that's reliable. And when you build applications, these applications don't, it doesn't really matter, you're not developing for an infrastructure, you're not developing for a cloud, you're developing general purpose applications that are highly portable, and what I'll show you today is how we're able to build, build it once, develop it once, and be able to migrate it to any infrastructure of your choice or any cloud of your choice. So this is, this is game changing, right? The ability to write applications, write it once, and without worrying about portability, without changing a single line of code, that same application can now be run on any cloud, right? So this is truly enabling, enabling multi-cloud. 
It's all, it's offered as a managed service. Uh, Google offers, Google Cloud offers uh, Anthos as a managed service, which means that you can, it, you don't have to worry about the software lifecycle. It's all managed, the bits are managed by, by Google Cloud. So it's fully offered as a as managed service. And it has full access to the Google Cloud Marketplace. It has full access to Google Cloud services. And I'll go into more detail on what that means. But what this enables is true multi-cloud portability for any customer looking to do application modernization. Right, so application modernization is the number one uh, driving force in the, in the industry. When customers and developers and are moving from more traditional applications to more microservice modernized applications. And as they do that modernization, uh, Google Cloud together with Cisco is making it easy for customers to make that, uh, to make that transition. Let me double click a little bit more into, uh, into the Anthos architecture. So first let's, you know, the applications are, you know, these are containerized applications that run on, a, you know, on container infrastructure. Uh, and the key element in this is using Kubernetes as the distribution, as a, as a common infrastructure platform or the orchestration layer to manage the container lifecycle. Now, uh, so, and what is the, the brand new announcement with today's, uh, you know, with, uh, with today's announcement is that this container platform, the Kubernetes platform, is also going to be available on-premise. So you already had GKE, which was available running in the cloud, but now you've got the ability to run the exact same GKE. Uh, if you don't mind, could you switch off your cell phone? Um, I don't think it's uh, appropriate to be talking on the phone and during the session. Sorry about that. Um, so if you, uh, you know, so to, to continue where I left off, right? So you have the, you know, the, the Kubernetes environment was running GKE, which was running in the cloud. Now with Anthos, you have the exact same GKE environment that is now running on premise. So an application that was developed on Google Cloud could be immutably tran you know, can be, you know, transferred or deployed in the premise. So you can run the application experience looks exactly the same, extremely consistent. And on top of that, along with uh, you know, Google Cloud's also providing managed Istio services. So those of you who are familiar with Istio and the service mesh, what it allows you to do is apply policies. So you have consistent policies, consistent security policies for microservices needing to access either other services in the premise or services in the cloud, including Google Cloud services, like Google Cloud native services. So the ability to do managed IT policy, managed security for a modern application environment. In addition to this, uh, we've, or they've, you know, Anthos also includes monitoring capabilities to provide you know, seamless monitoring across both the, you know, the prem environment as well as the cloud environment. And this is you know, very, you know, for, for developers, very easy to monitor the health of the application, the health of the infrastructure, completely consistent running across both cloud and prem. So this is the overview of, of Anthos, right? Uh, 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 a managed platform from Google that allows you to do application modernization. This application, it allows you to do application modernization in place. So in the past, when you were looking to do uh, you know, modernization, typically you, you, you do the development on, uh, you know, on Google Cloud or GKE. But now if you don't even want your developers, if customers don't want developers to develop on the cloud, you can actually do entire development in the premise. But if you want to develop in the cloud, you can develop in the cloud and deploy into, into, into the premise or the other, work, other way around. It's completely seamless and secure, unlocking developers from worrying about which cloud you're running on or which infrastructure you're running on. The choice of where to run depends on the policy set by your enterprise, by your customer, your IT policy, SecOps policy will decide where you run it, but it unshackles the developers because now you don't have to worry about where it's running, so it's right once, deploy anywhere, and all the security capabilities required by IT and SecOps you know, to, to run in an enterprise environment. So just to summarize the value proposition, both for, you know, for IT ops, DevOps, and for, and for developers, really it's about, it's a managed environment, run on prem or run in the cloud, fully secure, fully portable, supported by Google. And this is you know, the key value proposition of, of Anthos. Now, what is Cisco being doing uh, you know, together with, uh, you know, with, uh, with Google Cloud? So when it comes to, uh, you know, as customers are looking to adopt hybrid cloud, there's, there's a number of challenges that block or deter hybrid cloud adoption. The first thing is that they have existing data center infrastructure, which may be legacy data center infrastructure. There's a need to modernize data center infrastructure. 
The second thing is the data center is not a place in the in the uh, in the network anymore. It's not a it's not a fixed location because increasingly with the adoption of edge computing, IoT type use cases, uh, branch office use cases, the data center is actually distributed. Cisco likes to refer to it as a data center anywhere or data center everywhere because now you take your compute to where the data is because you need to be able to process data uh, without having to transport large volumes of data across uh, you know, across slow WAN links. So there are use cases where you need to do edge computing. And so how do you solve the challenge when you need to do edge computing at scale and be able to run uh, these modernized applications on them? So there are some challenges in, in evolving uh, data center requirements. And really what customers are looking for is a private cloud or a distributed private cloud because now the private cloud could be in one data center across multiple data centers or across edge locations. And you need to have a, a, a distributed private cloud which looks and feels just like the public cloud environment is when you're, when you're deploying applications. We've talked about security and I'll talk about you know, one particular use case with security, especially when it comes to edge, you know, edge and branch locations. Having the ability to have secure connectivity between the edge to the data center to the cloud and having ubiquitous security across that. And threat visibility across this hybrid environment is a challenge to solve as well. And all of this needs to be managed. So what we've done together with Google Cloud is develop a reference architecture for Anthos. What that reference architecture does is it solves all of these challenges that deter hybrid cloud adoption. So starting with a private cloud stack based on Cisco Hyperflex and Cisco ACI. So Cisco Hyperflex and ACI, this is part of the market leading product data center product portfolio that, uh, that we have developed. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Cisco Hyperflex is a hyperconverged infrastructure platform, a market leading hyperconverged platform available in the, uh, you know, for, for several years now. But what Hyperflex allows you to do is effectively build scalable private clouds on premise. It can scale up to very large core data centers. It can scale down to, you know, to edge locations or robo locations, IoT uh, use cases. So it's really a, a, a scale out hyperconverged architecture uh, that allows you to build very efficient, very reliable private clouds in the premise. And ACI is our Cisco's as data center SDN solution, which gives you the ability of doing network automation, network provisioning at scale, and being having the ability to automate across multiple layers of the networking stack, right? Underlay networking, overlay networking, container networking, service mesh networking. You know, all these layers of the, of the networking stack, you need a simple way to be able to manage different layers of networking, and that's where ACI comes in. So now this combination of Hyperflex and ACI gives you a very reliable, scalable, simple private cloud for customers wanting to run GKE on-premise. The second is Cisco's uh, you know, SD-WAN technology allows customers to securely extend their, uh, you know, their environments, whether it's data center or branch, and be able to securely extend that environment across VPNs and be able to you know, connect into, for example, the VPC. If you've got applications running in the VPC, being able to create secure endpoints in the cloud, uh, which are you know, uh, uh, VPN extensions from, you know, from the premise. Cisco StealthWatch Cloud is, again, a, a, a leading solution to be able to do threat detection, threat monitoring in a hybrid environment. Natively integrates with Google Cloud VPC flow logs. You can monitor you know, traffic, traffic patterns, traffic attacks uh, coming in the cloud or in the prem, and actually give customers the ability to, you know, to monitor threats across this hybrid, uh, this hybrid environment. And then Intersight is a SaaS-based infrastructure management platform from Cisco that allows customers to manage this private cloud. So together, this combination, this reference architecture of Cisco data center technology with the Cisco networking and, uh, and security portfolio combined with Anthos gives a very simple platform for customers looking to adopt hybrid cloud, making it easier for them to you know, build, connect, protect, and scale their, uh, you know, their hybrid cloud deployments. So this is the overall uh, you know, reference architecture. Those of you who are taking pictures, it's probably a good time to take the picture because now the build is complete. Uh, so you know, feel free to go ahead and, uh, and take pictures now. All right, let's keep going. So what does, what does this mean to you as customers, as developers, as customers? Why, why, why is this, what, what, is, what does this give you? What is the benefits? And what is the differentiation that Cisco and Google Cloud are, de are, are delving together? Number one, we are focusing on turnkey operations. We want the whole experience to bring up the infrastructure to be really simple, right? So what we are doing, working together with, uh, you know, with Google Cloud is integrating Anthos into Cisco's management platforms. So when a customer wants to bring up an instance of GKE on-prem, it's very simplified, 
turnkey, validated, out of the box, fully integrated, and uh, you know, it comes up and you can stand up a cloud on-prem in a very, very short time. Now, Hyperflex is uh, you know, a, a data center solution that integrates both compute and storage and soft, you know, software-defined storage, software-defined computer scale-out solution. But it gives you an enterprise-grade private cloud platform capable of providing enterprise-grade compute and storage services to Kubernetes. Even more specifically, um, you know, Kubernetes, if you're, those of you who are familiar with the storage architecture of Kubernetes, there's a newly developed container storage interface or the CSI interface for, for Kubernetes. And what we're able to do with Hyperflex is provide that storage, that CSI interface, for persistent volumes in Kubernetes running on our hyper-converged uh, infrastructure. And that's, that's what we're doing. So what that allows you to do is that the platform is enterprise-grade, highly resilient, highly clustered. And so now when applications are running on that, they're running with full resiliency in an enterprise-grade uh, hyper-converged platform. And I mentioned now, you know, networking uh, a couple of times, but again, this integration, this integrated networking and security into the platform really gives us an end-to-end architecture for, uh, for security. And the entire solution is jointly integrated, jointly validated. You will see reference designs, reference architectures that are going to be published by Cisco and Google Cloud. And we are doing a lot of product integration in the back end. And over, over the next few months, uh, you will see more and more announcements that we're going to make about further integrations, tighter integrations that we're doing to create a really simple, out-of-the-box cloud for customers wanting to run Kubernetes on-prem. Now, just a small blurb on Hyperflex for those of you who are not familiar with hyperconvergence or with Hyperflex. So just a, a brief product pitch on what, what this is. I won't, I, won't, I, won't, I won't spend too much time on product pitches, but just as an introduction. Right? Uh, one of the biggest challenges with traditional data center designs uh, is that it's highly manual to operate and very, very cumbersome to, to build and operate traditional data center designs. And that's the reason technology like hyperconvergence has become extremely popular. Because what hyperconvergence does is it basically integrates compute storage and networking into a, in a, into a seamless software-defined uh, you know, platform, which is very simple to build, very simple to operate. There's, you don't need different you know, uh, combinations of, of storage teams or networking teams. It's all very simple. It's all built on a, on a virtualized platform. And it basically gives you, think of it as a cloud in a box. right? It's a cloud in a box in a small environment and because of the clustered nature of the architecture, it can scale out. You can start with something as small as three nodes in a cluster uh, and scale this out to eight, 16, 32, 64 nodes. You can build really, really large clusters. Uh, and we've got customers deploying this in hundreds uh, in, in large core data centers. At the same time, we've also developed technology to be able to scale it down to edge environments so you can run in, in branch offices and IoT use cases. I've got a very, very interesting demo that I want to show you at the end where we are going to use Hyperflex running in a factory floor doing real-time inferencing for a machine learning use case. It's an industrial automation use case, a very interesting use case that I'd like you to you know, pay attention to at the end. And because of this ability for us to build this ubiquitous architecture that spans across the data center to the cloud to the edge, we've, done, we've, we've defined the notion of what we call the distributed cloud. So now what you can think of is a distributed cloud for your modernized applications, for Kubernetes applications, and complete freedom, both for developers and for the infrastructure operators, on whether you want to run the app in the cloud, in data centers, or the edge, but you've got a seamless, ubiquitous architecture that allows uh, customers to do all of these. So just to summarize the value proposition, just a very simple one, you know, very simple, uh, you know, very, very, uh, you know, very simple to operate, highly reliable architecture. And very importantly, it does allow the coexistence of what we, what the, uh, what uh, analysts call mode one and mode two, right? So mode one refers to traditional IT operations. Typically, these are running, you know, traditional applications running in a virtualized environment, because customers are not, mod you can't modernize everything at one shot, right? So you have, you know, typically, the databases are still running in virtual machines. Uh, they could be running in traditional storage, and you've got the ability to have, you know, the, the web front end start to get modernized. They get, they get containerized. Then the application services start to get containerized. As everything becomes distributed, you have to have the ability to coexist existing traditional applications with the more modernized uh, containerized applications. And what you're able to do with this architecture, with Hyperflex, is you can actually run them on the same architecture, the same environment. So you don't have to do a forklift upgrade of your data center. And you can have a seamless transition between the traditional world and the modernized, uh, and the modernized application world. 
And like I said before, uh, highly scalable, so it gives you the economics of the cloud as well. So you can build as you grow and you pay as you grow uh, for those who are looking to start small and, and, uh, and evolve. Again, a very short uh, you know, pitch on ACI. Um, all I'm going to say, ACI is Cisco's SDN technology. And the main thing, the main reason ACI is important in the architecture is because you've got multiple layers of the networking stack, right? There's the physical networking or the underlay networking. You've got the overlay networking. And then in the world of containers, you've got the, you know, you've got the, the, CA, the container networking layer, and then you've got the service layer, which is at the layer seven. So if you have multiple software stacks or multiple layers of the networking, troubleshooting and monitoring and providing visibility into that is complicated. And what we're able to do with ACI is give a single networking stack that's able to manage both the physical overlay container networking and service networking can all be integrated into one stack. So when you need to troubleshoot, when things go wrong, it's one, you know, one tool that you go to to figure out you know, how you troubleshoot the environment. So that's the reason technology like ACI is really important because it allows you to create that ubiquitous kind of vertical network stack that allows you to man manage all layers of the networking environment. Uh, I don't know how many of you are, you know, partners in the room, but you know what we've been working together with uh, with uh, with our partner with uh, with Google Cloud is create a very simple, uh, you know, ability for managed service, uh, you know, uh, MSI system integrators, uh, technology partners to take this joint solution. There are reference designs available, blueprints available, uh, or that will be available, uh, and we'll take these and allow customers to either, you know, get customers started. So you have simple, you know, starter kits that will allow customers to get started. If you want to actually go and you know, develop the data centers, build the data centers, develop applications, there are so you know partners can offer services there, and then be able to you know implement a broad set of application you know services for application modernization uh, as well. So for uh, again, if there's any any uh, uh, you know partners, channel partners, system integration partners in the room, uh, you know we're working to enable uh, enable for you as well how to easily consume and you know uh, pass on the benefits to your end customers. I'm going to switch gears a little bit now. I talked about the technology. Uh, now, I think this is the more interesting part of it. What does, that, what does it really mean? So I'm going to talk about four different use cases, and I've got demos for two of these use cases. So just to, you know, pay attention to, you know, to some of these demos. So the first one, and the, the first demo that I'll show you, is the ability to have consistent operations across the cloud and the prem. The demo that I'm going to show you is how a single application that's been developed, available in the GCP marketplace, you can pick, pick which cloud you want to have that deployed to. And without changing anything, you can just take that application as it is and get it running, and you have a seamless, you know, kind of seamless customer experience, a consistent experience across the prem and the cloud. Now, this ability to have the seamless experience also enables other use cases for things like if you want to use DevOps in the cloud, but you want to do production in the premise, right? So you can do DevOps, you know, do the development in your, so developers can build your, in, 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 in GKE, for example, and then IT may have an IT policy that says this application needs to be deployed in the premise, you know, for sovereignty or, or security reasons, and you can have a simple IT policy that allows you to do it, but from a developer's point of view, he doesn't have to change anything when it's going into production because it is already IT ready, it's already data center ready. The third use case uh, is, is one where we're, uh, if there are services running in the premise that need access to cloud services that are running in Google Cloud, the Istio architecture actually allows uh, you know, seamless, uh, you know, seamless connectivity, secure connectivity between services running in the prem and Google Cloud services. So you can here's an example of either cloud, uh, cloud ML services or, or big data services running in the cloud, and you've got seamless access uh, to that. Uh, so you unlock the, so you can still be running, the application could still be running on the premise, but you've got access to services that are running in the cloud. And the last one is, is uh, where we're talking about using edge, the power of edge computing. And the second demo that I'm going to show you will be around edge computing and how we can use hybrid edge computing architectures using machine learning as an example. So I'll talk, that's the second demo that I'll do. So I'll show you use case one and use case four are the two demos that I'll, I'm going to be showing to you. So um, to just describe, and this is the, the Anthos uh, architecture uh, that I showed you in the beginning, but again, I'm just using this as a reference. So if you, whether you use uh, you know, Google CI CD tools, you know, uh, using Spinnaker to be able to build, uh, you know, build and develop your own applications, or if these are packaged applications available in the marketplace, what this allows you to do is you can have the ability to de deploy the application across both the premise and the cloud. And that is what I'm going to show you next. All right. 
So as the demo kicks off, um, I had to, we had to you know, put this into video because if you show the whole thing live, it does uh, take a little bit of time. So we've put this into video so we can actually run you through the, through the demo. So to start the demo, what we're going to start is first, we are going to create Kubernetes clusters on the Hyperflex system running inside the premise. And step two, we are going to register that cluster into, into GKE so you can actually view and manage that GKE cluster from GKE, even though it's running on the prem. So the first step in the installation is actually to get an admin workstation running in the prem, and there's an install process uh, you know, that to which we get the admin workstation running. Once the admin workstation is running inside the premise environment, there is you just create a cluster create command from the admin console. And what this show, what showed you right now is that the cluster creation completed in the background. Once that, so now what, what we've got is we've got the cluster has been created running in the premise. Second, you actually go to GKE. So this is running in the GKE console. And what we're doing over here is we're now claiming that cluster into GKE. So there's a two-factor authentication, get the, you know, the, the authentication token, bring that, register that cluster with the, you know, with the cloud. We're gonna give it some tags because we're, this is running in an RTP data center and we've given it a Hyperflex tag to notify, that, you know, to signify that this is Hyperflex. And if you actually see here in GKE, in the console, you're seeing a Hyperflex GKE on-premise cluster running in a data center environment. And you're seeing that side by side with GKE clusters running in a, a, a US West data center, a US West region of Google Cloud. So now in GKE, what you have seen is that you see both data center clusters and cloud-based clusters are all running, are viewed in one single, uh, you know, one single dashboard in your GKE uh, view. Now, just to confirm that this is indeed running on the premise environment, we're going to do a simple experiment. We'll look at the nodes that are running in the, uh, you know, running in the premise, and you look at the nodes that, and we'll compare with the VMs that are running in the Hyperflex environment. And you'll see that the, the same worker nodes that were created in the premise, it's, you know, there's a complete match between that. It's just, you know, just if there's any, any skeptics in the room, just to confirm that, you know, the, the clusters and the VMs that have been created by Anthos and you see in, in GKE are the exact same VMs and nodes, these are Kubernetes nodes running in a VM that is uh, running on the premise environment. Now let's go to the last stage of the demo, right? In the last stage of the demo, what we're doing is that we're going to take a package application, just to keep it simple, we're gonna take a package application from the GKE marketplace. To keep it simple, we've used Nginx as the example. So we've taken an Nginx, uh, in, so we take Nginx from the GCP marketplace, and we're going to deploy an instance of Nginx into the Hyperflex cluster running in the cloud. Uh, running, sorry, the Hyperflex cluster running, uh, running on the, in the premise. So what you'll, what you'll see in, in, the, in the next few steps is when you go to, you know, go to the marketplace and pick uh, Nginx out of, the, out of the marketplace, we can pick the cluster to which you can deploy. So either you can pick a cluster that's running in the cloud or pick the Hyperflex cluster that is the, you know, the GKE on-prem cluster running in, uh, you know, in the premise. Just change the namespace, give it an instance ID, and click deploy, and that's it. You've taken a standard application running in the marketplace. This could be a CICD based custom application as well, but it doesn't matter. Once you've built the application and it's available in a Kubernetes environment, getting this deployed and running in the premise is a click of a button. So this is where the game changing attribute comes in because now you've truly enabled consistency between the cloud and the prem because without changing a bit, without changing a line of code, you've created a consistent environment between the prem and the cloud. And just to confirm, right, so what we're doing now is we've taken the external IP of, uh, you know, of the Nginx system, just logged into that, and you can see the service is up and running. And this is running, it's an Nginx uh, application. So, you know, it's a simple example, uh, but basically what we've shown is how we are able to take applications developed in GKE and host that without, with absolute simplicity into a cluster that's running on the premise. So the demo was, was pro the video was probably fun and running a little too fast for you to you know, pay attention. So let me just slow down and repeat this again. What you saw in the GKE console was a set of clusters. Some of those clusters were running in GKE in the cloud. Some of those cl clusters were running in a data center, but it didn't matter from GKE's point of view. It didn't matter from the application point of view because now you can just take the application and just pick which instance or which cluster you want that running and it creates a completely seamless environment across both of them. Now, Anthos is also going to be running on other public clouds as well. So now you can take that same example and from the marketplace, 
once you've claimed the cluster running anywhere, you can deploy this in any cloud, or on the premise, or in the edge, or in, or in Google Cloud, and it's completely seamless from a developer and operations point of view. So this is really where we think that there is, this, is, this is opening up uh, you know, game-changing possibilities for our customers that are looking to adopt uh, you know, application modernization. Now let's go into the second, uh, the second demo, all right? So in the case of the second demo, in this case, uh, the, uh, let me explain the, the demo context a little bit before we go into, uh, into details on this. So the background here is this is, uh, you know, this is a Bolts application. Those of you who have done, you know, done any, any, any work on ML, uh, this is a standard application that's used to do machine learning uh, uh, you know, demos. But the, the problem statement is this. The problem statement is this is a factory automation uh, environment. It's an, industrial, uh, it's an industrial plant, and the industrial plant is using a variety of bolts. Now, these bolts, they, 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 have, they have different metrics. They have different you know, uh, uh, measurement uh, dimensions. Right? They have the standard dimension. There's a metric dimension. And to the visual eye, you can hardly tell the difference between, between these two bolts. But if you put the wrong bolt into the into the into the uh, the machine, the, you could actually have it could stop uh, it could stop production. It could ruin the, the it could ruin the uh, you know the the equipment. So the the ability to use the right bolt in the right factory automation industrial automation workflow is very important. Now, if you leave this to humans to be able to visually detect, it's really hard because as you can see, the difference between them is very very minuscule. It's hard to tell the difference between the two of them. And so this is a classic example where you can do real-time machine learning at the factory floor in order to be detect the right bolt and make sure that the right bolt is used. I'm just using the bolt as an example, right? There are many, many more use cases that get enabled uh, you know, to something like this. But the point is that you, we are using the power of machine learning to be able to do real-time image diagnosis and use that image diagnosis to solve a particular business problem. And in this particular case, in this demo, what we are show, going to show you is how we are building a hybrid machine learning uh, use case. So we've got data scientists that have developed, I think the next slide goes into that in more detail. So data scientists, you know, there's the data sources that's available, which is typically the, you know, the stream of images that's available as a training data, right? You've got to collect and clean that data. There's entire data pipeline work that is, that is required. The data scientists then develop the model uh, to, in, you know, there's training and then you develop a model. At the end, when you need to run real-time inferencing, that model does need to be deployed into the, into the premise, right? Into, into, not the premise, that model needs to be deployed wherever the inferencing needs to happen. In this particular case, we've used an example where the, the training and the model development happens in Google Cloud using Kubeflow, and I'll describe, describe uh, Kubeflow in a little bit more detail. But the inferencing actually happens on a Hyperflex edge system that's sitting in the factory floor. Now, because of the real-time nature of this uh, of the inferencing, it's very difficult because as the, the factory production line is moving, as you know, as uh, you know, these equipment, the, the bolts are coming to the line, you, the latency required to process these means that it's difficult to send some of this transaction over to the cloud or to the data center. So this is the reason. Right? So I, I talked about some reasons why customers may choose to, you know, to, to have workloads running you know, in the prem or the edge. I talked about security. I talked about sovereignty. I talked about you know, data gravity. But latency is actually a, a driving uh, factor as well. So when you have applications that require very low latency access to, to, to data, sometimes it's not possible to run that, uh, to, run that to, to move the workload back to the cloud. So it's a classic use case why a combination of cloud and edge is required to be able to solve a, a, a customer problem. Now, what's the technology behind this? Right? So the technology behind this is, uh, is uh, an open source project called Kubeflow. So Kubeflow is a project. It's another project where Cisco and Google have collaborated very strongly. We have contributed a lot. We're the number two contributor to Kubeflow after, after Google. But what is Kubeflow? Kubeflow is basically an integration of TensorFlow and Kubernetes. It allows customers to build TensorFlow models and deploy them into Kubernetes. In addition to the ability to just run TensorFlow models in Kubernetes, it also has the ability to manage data pipelines as well. Now, again, I don't know how many of you are data scientists or machine learning engineers in the, you know, in the, in the room, but one of the biggest challenges, right? You, you, you'll find that data scientists are able to do the model development is, you know, is relatively easy. It's still, it's still time consuming. You still need time to develop it. But once you develop the model, deploying that to where you need the model to run is actually a very complex problem. We've had customers come and tell us that it can take six months or even a year sometime to get models running efficiently in, in the infrastructure where you need the model to run. 
So this is the second problem that, Co that Kubeflow solves because it gives you the ability to have these reusable data pipelines and very simple uh, capabilities to be able to run these, uh, these data pipelines in a location of your choice. Right, so in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how we can run these Kubeflow pipelines and actually deploy it on a Hyperflex Edge cluster, running Anthos, running GKE on-prem on Hyperflex Edge, and we're able to deploy these, uh, these Kubeflow pipelines into, into the Edge, so you can do real-time inferencing uh, at the Edge. So let the, you know, I'll, I'll let the video run uh, and explain uh, you know, what, what's going on in the background as the, as the demo video is running. So first, you're seeing the, the model workflow uh, that you can see in, the, in, uh, in Kubeflow. Let's open up the Jupyter Notebook, right? the Jupyter Notebook, which is used for the, the model development. And it'll pull up the Python code uh, that actually does the, you know, the, the Kubeflow pipelines are, are implemented in Python code that is running, uh, you know, running in, in this case, the model development could happen you know, in any environment that supports uh, you know, Kubernetes and Kubeflow. So here's the Kubernetes, the Kubeflow pipeline for the Bolt image classification uh, you know, uh, application that is being developed. The next step is you actually actually start the process of doing the model. Now the model development is complete and now you need to deploy the model. So now this, what it is showing you in the next few steps is the ability to how is, the, how is models deployed into the, you know, into the environment. So you basically there's a, there's a click run and then you, you start the deployment and you click run on, the, uh, on Kubeflow. And basically what it is doing now is it starts the process of deploying the Kubeflow, uh, you know, the Kubeflow pipeline is deployed into the target environment. So you can see that as the you know as the video plays, you can see that the you know the, the the training is completed, the deployment is going on, and the services to to actually do the when you say model deployment, there is a bunch of services that need to be running, and there's a bunch of services that get spawned up in order to implement that uh, you know the, the implementation of the uh, of that inferencing workflow. And so what you've got now is now you go to the Kubeflow dashboard and you're able to actually see the models and you see that the the you know the the tensor board, which is the dashboard for for TensorFlow. And now once the model is running, we can do a quick inferencing test. Yeah, give sample images to the, you know, to the model, and let's see if it does the classification accurately. Right? So basically what we have done is using Kubeflow, the, uh, uh, the, you know, the, Kube, the, the, the TensorFlow model has been deployed to the target environment, and we are passing sample images to see if the, app, the, the model is able to detect in real time uh, what, you know, what the, you know, what the uh, uh, type of bolt was. But where is this all running? This entire environment is running on a GKE on-prem cluster in a Hyperflex Edge system. So if you see over here, so the Bolt, you can see that Bolt's application, uh, the, 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 Bolt, the Bolt identification uh, model is actually running in a Hyperflex GKE, uh, you know, GKE on-prem cluster, running in the, you know, running in uh, Edge location. And we are actually going to go into Kubernetes and start to look at the actual services themselves. So you're going to filter on the services that are running in, uh, you know, uh, in running here. You're going to filter for the cluster, you know, for the services that are running in that target cluster that we picked, which is a GKUP cluster running on that Hyperflex Edge system. And uh, the video went a little faster than I was speaking. Uh, but what, you, what, what happened at the end was that it actually showed the running services, uh, all the TensorBoard uh, ML services that were running as part of that model. All of that was running in an environment that is running on, uh, you know, on an Edge cluster. So look at the power of what, what we just showed here, right? which is that from a data scientist or a developer, a ML developer point of view, now they can build uh, their training and their models and they use the tools that's available, which is, you know, which is uh, time consuming in itself. But when they need to pick the location where they need to run, uh, you know, where the, uh, the model needs to be deployed, very, very simple. So the power of Anthos comes in here because what Anthos is it to do is give that same consistent environment. Right? Because we're running GKE on-prem, we're running GKE in the premise and we're running GKE in the cloud, and both are running Kubeflow, they, we've created a seamless hybrid development environment for anyone looking to do hybrid ML. Right, so th this is you know we talked about the promise of what this you know what this enables, and you know hopefully some of these demos does that and it shows you what is possible now when you have this seamless or consistent development environment that's available both in the prem and the cloud. I'm going to you know move over next to a customer case study. I'd like to talk about a financial services customer called KeyBank. So KeyBank is a large financial services organization. Uh, they're headquartered in the Midwest. 
they're headquartered in, in the Midwest, spread their footprint is across 15 states, 1,100 branches, uh, close to 20,000 employees, a fairly large uh, you know, financial services corporation. You know, they, they offer a whole host of, uh, uh, of, uh, of financial services. Now, Key Bank is one of the more, um, I would say, one of the more forward-looking uh, you know, uh, uh, enterprises in the world. They've had a DevOps team, and they started Kubernetes and container development over four years ago. Right, so they're one of the early movers in this, uh, you know, in the industry. So they are, I would say, thought leaders uh, when it comes to Kubernetes adoption and converting traditional. You know, you'd, you'd assume that the banks and the financial services are, are more, you know, are, are more averse to moving to, you know, to to some of those modernization technologies. They've been doing it for over four years. So they've been using Kubernetes for over four years right now. And what KeyBank did is they have picked Anthos on Hyperflex as their platform for deploying their microservice applications in the premise data centers. Now, because of, uh, you know, of multiple reasons, they need to have an environment that's available on premise. And first, they are big Google Cloud customers. So they do a lot of development on Google Cloud. They use GKE very heavily. And they've been, you know, they first wanted to build an environment where they can build these applications and run these applications uh, in, the, in, the, in the premise. And one of the things that Anthos gives, uh, you know, gives this customer is the ability to monitor and check the health of the application using, uh, you know, using the tools that we talked about, uh, uh, you know, uh, like Stackdriver, uh, which allows you to monitor the health of the application. But the use case really for them is uh, the, the reason why the, the hybrid environment is very important to them is because they want to be able to burst to the cloud. Right? So they, when they build their infrastructure, they size it for, you know, for average, uh, average load. But as the during peak loads, uh, what happens is they need to they don't want to build large data centers to cater for peak load. So they want to be able to burst into the cloud when they need to, but the average load is running on uh, you know in the in the data center environment. So this ability, this you, this kind of seamless infrastructure where uh, you know you have both the premise environment and the cloud, and you can burst into the cloud without changing anything, right? So you can have auto scaling capabilities, and with the auto scaling capabilities built into the app, you can build the logic in to say just auto scale this into GCP during times of load, which allows them to you know have the seamless environment. So it's a, it's another use case of why it is important to have a you know a uniform, a consistent environment across uh, across both. Now, why did they pick Hyperflex, right? So they picked, the reason they picked Hyperflex uh, was because they wanted a simple private cloud to be able to run GKE on-premise, right? So they wanted it to be simple. They wanted to you know, have all of the, you know, the infrastructure capabilities built into this platform, very simple to install. And in fact, this entire POC was completed in less than two weeks' time. We started, you know, we, we, we sent them a Hyperflex cluster as an initial, uh, as an initial POC. They brought up the, uh, you know, brought up the, uh, the Hyperflex system in, 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 a, in a few hours. They deployed, uh, they deployed GKE on-prem onto that cluster, and they started migrating their Kubernetes applications to this environment. This POC has completed successfully. Very, very, you know, the speed at which the POC completed and the ease at which they were able to do it, you know, goes back to some of the things that we said in the past, which is our goal is how easy do we make it for customers to be able to build these cloud environments on premise. So really simple, uh, you know, uh, environment to be able to bring up these uh, these applications. And of course, for them, the reliability was highly important as well, right? Because of the, the clustered nature of the Hyperflex architecture, where there is zero downtime, application upgrades can happen without requiring cluster downtime. Infrastructure upgrades can happen without requiring cluster downtime. So you can do, com you know, uh, compute, uh, 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 you know, talk about compute, you can do firmware upgrades, you can do storage upgrades, all of that while applications continue to run. So the ability to do zero downtime upgrades was extremely important. So really this is, again, bringing one of those cloud attributes to the premise because now this is a cloud and that doesn't go down. Even if you're doing things in the infrastructure, the cluster always stays up, applications always stay up. So it is a zero, time, you know, zero downtime environment for, you know, for customers looking to get that cloud experience on-prem. So you know, this is a, uh, you know, a, a great example of a customer that went through the journey of evaluating why do they want a hybrid cloud architecture and why they picked Anthos and Hyperflex as the platforms to do, uh, you know, to do hybrid cloud. So to wrap up, uh, you know, what, what do you need to do to get started? Uh, you know, to get started, first of all, we've got val you know, validated designs uh, in our reference architectures together with Cisco and Google Cloud. On, and these platforms have been validated, they've been tested, so you get uh, you know, validated hardware, or you will get, once it's general available, you build in a, in a, in a, in a few months, it's gonna be general availability. And so you'll get all of this available, simple, seamless, out of the box, 
and you can purchase it either through you know through Cisco or you can you know, purchase it through Google. You buy the you know you buy the uh, the Cisco product from Cisco and you buy uh, uh, Anthos from uh, from Google, and it'll be jointly supported by Cisco and Google technical support, right? So this is this is what it takes to get started. Very simple for you to get started if you if you choose to, uh, you know, and jointly supported by by both Cisco and Google and Google Cloud. If you're interested in getting more information, uh, you know you can start with some of the you know the the, the product URLs. Uh, the you know the, you've got URLs both on the Google website as well as on the Cisco website on how to get more information. Uh, there's a training uh, program. There's a CSP or Anthos training program that's actually scheduled uh, for later this month. Uh, those of you who are interested in getting more hands-on experience, there is a training program that's available, and there'll be a series of other trainings uh, that will uh, you know that will be available. And uh, you know you can get uh, you know get started and uh, you know get your hands uh, you know get your hands dirty with uh, with trying out some of this new technology. Uh, just a very last uh, you know uh, update. That it, this is this one is not relevant, not directly relevant to Anthos, but uh, you know Cisco also has a number of uh, other offers that are available in the Google Cloud Marketplace. App Dynamics, which is our application monitoring solution, StealthWatch Cloud, which I talked about previously, which is our our, our threat mod our threat monitoring solution, and the Cloud Services Router are all available on the Cisco Marketplace. And today we also announced the availability of WebEx, our collaboration suite, uh, on uh, the G Suite Marketplace as well. So you know a whole host of uh, you know other things that Cisco and Google are collaborating on, uh, uh, Cisco and Google Cloud are collaborating on. Uh, when it comes to uh, you know, uh, you know joint technology, joint integration between our between our companies. So the last thing that we'd like you to take away is this joint solution between Google Cloud and Cisco, with Anthos and Hyperflex and ACI and the other Cisco uh, you know uh, you know technology, allows customers to adopt the next generation of hybrid cloud, which allows developers to build once, deploy anywhere, complete freedom of where the applications are running. And this is jointly developed, engineered, and supported by Cisco and Google Cloud.